All right. Hello again, everyone. It's so great to be speaking to you again in this new year. I feel like I haven't gotten the chance to introduce the Ledgeview Partners a webinar in a while, so it feels really good to be here. I hope you feel the same. We have an awesome topic that we're covering today, how to accelerate lead generation with inside sales, which I'll let Greg Dove, Director of Business Consulting at Ledgeview, talk about in just a few moments here. But before we can get into that, I want to cover a few key notes with you. As some of you on today's call may know, my name is Julia Flaherty, and I am the marketing coordinator at Ledgeview Partners. We are a business and technology consulting firm who partners with organizations to transform sales, marketing, and customer service operations and processes that are supported by core technologies, including CRM and marketing automation. Our experts provide strategic business advice to our clients, process definition, and technology solutions that advance business processes forward, helping them to achieve their unique business goals in sales, marketing, customer service, CRM, whatever may have you. Today's webinar will take up about a half hour of your time today. We welcome those who are new to Ledgeview Partners webinars and welcome back all of our past attendees. It's awesome to see you on this call today and we're excited to have this group come back for more. This webinar is being recorded and it will be available on demand after the live session today. All attendees will receive a follow-up email after this webinar is complete with a link to access that presentation. So if you haven't already, we do recommend you add us to your safe senders list to ensure you get that email. Or if you do happen to find any emails from us in your spam folder, please go ahead and mark those as not spam. Then you'll be able to share that within your professional networks very smoothly. To ensure the best audio quality, we do have all of you on listen-only mode. But if you have a question or comment, go ahead and submit those in the question pane of your GoToWebinar control panel, and we'll follow up with you afterwards. So now that you know a little more about who we are as an organization, I want to welcome Greg Dove, who once again is Director of Business Consulting for Ledgeview Partners. Greg is in charge of a big team here, and he leads clients and employees to success with his experience and expertise in the world of sales. Today, we have the pleasure of learning from him all about how Inside Sales is booming and how we can benefit. Hi, Greg. I'll let you get started. Hi, Julia. Thank you very much, and good afternoon and good morning to everyone, depending on where you are, and uh, thank you for attending today. So whenever I think of lead generation, I can't help but but laugh, and, and the reason that is is I always go back to the, the Glenn Gary, Glenn Ross movie, and I don't know if you have all have seen that, but um, it's a Alec Baldwin movie where he's meeting with his sales team, and he's a very, very angry sales manager, to say the least. And uh, what he talks about is these are the news, new leads, these are the Glenn Gary leads, and to you, they're gold. And there's another scene where one of the salespeople gets up and tries to grab a cup of coffee, and he stops them from doing it and says, coffee's for closers only. So it's uh, if you've never seen it, I recommend you watch the movie or maybe look at the clip, but it's, it's very uh, relevant in the world of lead generation. And probably one of the things that I like the most about the saying that you're seeing is, and to you, they're the gold. And what that is to all of us who participate in sales or lead generation, we, we're all looking for that next lead that's gold, the, the lead that's going to take us to that next sale or that next customer. So anyway, Glenn Gary, Glenn Ross, check it out. I highly recommend it. So before we get into the actual presentation, I wanted to give you a little background information and uh, there's a, a couple of definitions I wanted to share and then a job description for a lead generation person. And before I get into any of the presentation, I just want to say I'm going to use the term lead generation and sales development rep uh, pretty closely because they're really the same role, so they're interchangeable. But when we talk about a lead, a lead is a person or company who has indicated interest in your company's product or service. So they might not quite be ready to purchase, but they're aware of your company and they've given some type of single that there's a interest. You could also look at this as potentially terming it like a prospect. So they're not qualified yet, but there is an interest. Secondly, when we talk about lead generation, 
This is the marketing process of soliciting or attracting inquiries from potential customers through information collecting. So if you think of the role of a marketing team, they're doing campaigns, they're pushing all kinds of marketing materials out to get people interested in your, in, in your product or service. So that's really the process of lead generation as it pertains to marketing. Next, we have lead qualification. So we, we have an indicator that we have a, a prospect or a lead who's interested. And the next step is to really qualify that. So lead qualification is when the lead, lead generation specialist or the sales development rep um, makes the initial evaluation to determine whether or not you are likely to close that sale. So they're really qualifying it and, and helping move it down to the next step in your sales process. And finally, if we're talking about lead generation and sales development reps, what should you look for when you're hiring one? And the first thing I would say is you wanna hire someone that that enjoys the role of lead generation. So they, they've they chosen it as a career and they really enjoy the hunt. So, so going after and uncovering new business. Um, a lot of people refer to that as the hunter mentality. So that's something that's that's really evident in this individual. And you, you want to be careful to not turn your lead generation team or lead generation positions into a minor or developmental league or even the senior league. And what I mean by that is don't hire someone into that role with the thought of just moving them out into inside, I'm sorry, to outside sales after they've spent a while in that role. And conversely, you don't want to take someone who might be retiring in a couple of years and they're having a hard time going out on sales calls and then moving them into that role. Again, you want to find someone who really wants to be there, not just a temporary home for someone. So again, you don't want it to be the minor leagues or the senior leagues. Some of the traits you should look for is, is a, a rep who's really persistent and patient. So if you think of lead generation, uh, especially over the phone, you're gonna make a lot of calls where, where no one is gonna answer or worst case scenario, you may even get hung up on. And you have more of those calls than you do people that actually will talk to you. So you need to be really persistent and, and have a, a lot of patience. And with, with any role, you need to be willing to evolve in it. So I recommend you find someone who can employ multiple strategies to get to the decision maker and convert them into a valid opportunity. And then you, you need to be willing to learn new tricks. So technology is changing, buying habits are changing. So make sure you can adapt on, on the run and, and, and change as those um, differences in, in the buying habits occur. Clever, unorthodox, great listeners. Um, when I think of unorthodox, I think of someone who um, you know, has a little different demeanor about them. And frankly, if you're making 50 calls a day and getting hung up on, or not talking to more than 10 people, yeah, yeah, I have to have a, a little bit of wiring that makes you a little different. So it is an unorthodox uh, type position, and they also need to be really great listeners. <clears throat> so those are some things for you to consider when looking to, to fill that role. So now that we've kind of laid the background, let's dive right into our core presentation today. We're gonna talk about the roles marketing and inside sales plan lead generation. We'll give you some tips and strategies to succeed. And when you're going about any lead generation activities, you need to have some measurements. So we'll talk about some of those metrics and key performance indicators. You're gonna face a lot of objections when, when you're in the role of lead generation. So I took a few of the common ones and gave you some ways to, to overcome those. Then we're gonna talk about the future, but as you'll see in that slide, the future in some ways is already here. So we'll, we'll talk about how that role is changing. And then we'll give you some, some watch out or things to be careful of as you, as you get into the journey of lead generation. So a, a lot of times marketing and sales have a, uh, let, let's call it a bit of a difference of opinion when it comes to lead generation. Sometimes marketing thinks they're giving sales great leads and sales thinks marketing really isn't doing much for them. So I thought it would be worth our time to just take a look at the role of both marketing and sales and lead generation. So the role of marketing is really 
to identify target markets and develop ways to create a lead list. And that can be done a number of ways, but just to call it out, it's marketing who should identify the target and help you develop the lead list for, for any type of lead generation activity. And once they do that, they, they also very typically create a campaign. So this could be an email campaign, um, it could be a social media campaign, but there's some type of activity that marketing is gonna introduce to, to get the leads interested. And if, if they're going to go through the effort of creating a campaign, uh, a lot of good organizations like to take it to the next step and create landing pages. So when, when your target market begins to interact and, and go to a landing page, that, that's a really good sign because they're starting to show more interest in, in your product or service. Marketing is also the one who comes up with that campaign, creates the, the landing pages, but then they also execute it. So they will go ahead and do that through email marketing. And a lot of organizations now have marketing automation tools like Acton or Click Dimensions to really aid in, in your campaign management. Another important thing is for marketing to support the campaign, and they can do that through through webinars like we're a part of today, they can use paid ads or really get active in social media. So going out and, and, and promoting through LinkedIn, through Twitter, or even through Facebook. So they, they should have some uh, great ways to utilize social media to help you all. And then everything that they're doing, they wanna capture in CRM typically, so they can do some type of lead scoring and then use that to the benefit of making the campaign better. And then marketing will also be really great at continuing those campaigns on an ongoing basis. And if there's leads that fall off, they can recycle them and get them back in on an active campaign. And I apologize if you hear a horn in the background, someone's car alarm is going off, so I apologize. So the role of inside sales and lead generation, it, it's to take the lead list that marketing gives them and then go ahead and put them in a segment. And you can segment those leads by size, industry, it could be a lead score, it might be type of customer, so maybe the customer is an active customer, past customer, prospect, or lead. So you should be able to get all that information from marketing and then create those segments and then customize your approach by segment because a lot of times your selling strategy or messaging might be different in one industry vertical compared to another. So just understand that and use that to your advantage. And then our ultimate goal in, in, in the lead generation as an inside sales rep is to identify the decision maker. And it's really important that you get to that right person because you don't want to be taking no from the secretary or the receptionist. So make sure you get to that decision maker and, and then you can actually capture all the relevant information. Marketing usually does a good job of giving you the basics, but then update and capture what's missing and then move to the point of qualifying that, that lead. And it could become a sales qualified lead or maybe you need to disqualify it because there is not that interest there. If you're gonna go ahead and qualify it, odds are in your sales process, you have the, the concept of creating an opportunity. So you move it from a sales qualified lead to an opportunity and, and then you can schedule follow-up uh, to make sure that not too much time elapses between qualifying it and following up. And a great way to do that is using some type of automation through CRM. And then if, if the opportunity holds true, you can go ahead and assign that to inside sales, your account manager, or even the field sales rep. But typically the person who generates the lead and qualifies it is not the one who works the opportunity to close. So some important tips and strategies to use. Um, I, I think we talked about the importance of marketing, but Again, just to refer back, it's really marketing's role to, to kind of create the campaigns and then to warm them up. So when you get them on the phone, your likelihood of closing is a lot better. It's also important to relate to your customers. And one of the best ways to do that is to get them talking about their business. Another way to accomplish that is, let's say you're calling construction companies and, and you have a product that's really good for construction companies. 
When you get a hold of them, let them know that you work with a lot of other construction companies and that you're, you're familiar with the industry. And this should at least give your, your lead uh, a, a feeling that you understand their industry a little bit and that obviously other people in their industry are using your product or service. So go ahead and relate to their business. One of the other key things to do before you really start making calls is understand and collaborate and make sure that you're, you're measuring the right things. So define what it is you wanna see. So when you're looking at your results, if they're great, you know things are working, but if they're not so great, pull back and adjust as necessary. So really be clear about what you're gonna measure and what equals success. You also, when, when calling leads, should be aware that the, the right time to get a hold of, of one lead isn't the, the same as another. So vary the time you're calling. If you just keep calling every Monday, Tuesday at eight o'clock in the morning and you're not getting a hold of someone, odds are that's gonna continue to happen. So make sure you adjust the, the time you, you call and probably the days as well if you're not having success. And then don't delay the no's. So again, going back to the beginning of our conversation today, you're gonna to have a lot more no's uh, than yeses. And the sooner you can get those out of the way, the better. So as a salesperson, sometimes we don't wanna hear the no, but I'm here to tell you, it's okay. Go ahead, listen to the lead. And if they're definitely not interested, move on because you don't wanna just keep them in the pipeline because you're, you're just, delaying that no once you actually talk to them. So spend your time wisely. Ask questions to understand what's important to them. So ask them, even if they say they, they're already using some, ask them what they like about that. Ask them who that, that competitor is, but understand what's important to them in, in choosing a, a vendor for a product or a service. And then I, I don't know how you could do a a real effective job doing lead generation if you didn't use CRM to track all the activities. So whether you have Dynamics or Salesforce, uh, Sugar, whatever it is, have something so you can actively track all of your activities. And if you have someone who's interested and they wanna know more about your product and it looks like they're gonna close as a sale or a new customer, ask them for a referral because obviously you've done something to, to win them over. So some of the things you need to watch out for, there's there's different rules and regulations based on the geography. So know where you're calling and understand what the, the laws or the requirements are. And they typically vary from state to state and country to country. An example of state to state is in, in the US, we have lots of states who have a one party notification for recording calls for coaching. So what that means is as long as the rep nodes are being recorded, that, that counts as one party being notified. But if you're a two-party notification state, then both the rep and the potential customer or, or lead, they need to know that the calls be record, being recorded as well. And then when you look at different countries, um, I'll give you an example. We were doing a campaign in Canada and we actually had to file a, a, a form with the Canadian government just stating uh, the types of the types of businesses we were calling, what products we were trying to sell, and the duration of that campaign. So it wasn't too hard, but you just got to have to be careful and make sure you're always in compliance. Know what is occurring in the area you're calling on. What that really means is if I'm trying to call California and there's, you know, unfortunately there were some wildfires that happened, you don't wanna be calling and trying to solicit for new business then. So just know where you're calling and make good, smart decisions. And if you have to delay it due to some reason, it's okay. And we'll talk about some tools that actually help you do that um, in just a minute. Make sure your team's qualified. So you, you wanna have someone who loves that hunter mentality and goes after it because they're gonna give you the best results. One of the unfortunate things that happens in lead generation is people try to get real clever and, and, and play games to get past the gatekeeper. And I've even heard people be dishonest to, to get to the right audience. And my advice is be honest. Um, if you can't get past the gatekeeper, 
don't lie to them. Go to LinkedIn or maybe try some other contacts. But whatever you have to do, you have to do it with integrity. So don't play games because there are people too. And if they find out you're playing a game to get to the decision maker, odds are you lost the business anyway. Don't talk over your accounts. So ask good questions and take the time to listen to them because odds are you're going to hear some things that will help you win them over. And also talking over your contacts is very rude. So ask questions and listen. And just remember a no now can be a yes later. So if, if someone says no today, ask them if you can follow up in six months. And if they say yes, go ahead and recycle that lead and, and schedule a follow up for six months from now. So if we're going to be making the calls and, and we have a lot of we, we have a lot at stake in, in these campaigns that we're running. So take time to understand what you want to measure. And, and some of the good things to measure I have listed here, but decision makers contacted. If you're not getting a hold of decision makers, you might need to pull back and understand who, who you're calling and, and why you're getting it wrong and then adjust. Uh, so measure the number of decision makers that you're getting a hold of. Uh, the quantity of SQLs, uh, compared to the number of leads that were sent over. So you'll get a percentage, and that'll be a good indicator as to how far um, you know, the campaign is taking you and how successful you are. The, the quality of the sales qualified leads that are not rejected by sales. This one is, is kind of scary. If you're qualifying leads and sending them to sales and they're rejecting them, you have a big problem. So just, just recognize that, look for that, and then be willing to work with the outside sales and understand what's going on. Obviously, creating opportunities from our leads is a good thing to measure. And then with any campaign, you want to know what your ROI is. So look at the cost per lead and, and just understand if it's a good campaign or it's a bad campaign. And the best way to get most of these measurements is going to be to track all those activities in CRM. And then you can also use CRM to to make sure you're following up in, in the, the proper, with the proper cadence. <clears throat> so a few examples of some, some common objections. Um, I already have a supplier. A lot of people would hear that and they might say, okay, thanks, have a good day and the call is over. But ask some questions like, can I ask who you're using? How's their service? Why did you choose them? And, and just try to get them talking and, and listen to see what your opportunities are. And sometimes people might be real blunt and just say, I already have someone. So then use a question like, well, when's the last time you switched suppliers? Why'd you do that? Just to get a little more perspective on them. Another common one is I'm busy. Can you send me something? Whenever I hear that, the first thing I'm gonna say, we have lots of products, lots of service, services, lots of materials. What specifically are you interested in? And get them to respond to that and then send them whatever they're requesting, but a lot of times this is just a, a stall tactic. So ask that question and it should help you understand if it's a, a real interest or not. If they just flat out say they're busy, ask when you can call them back when they might be able to talk. And another one that I've seen a lot is where did you get my information from? Why are you contacting me? And again, this is where we wanna be honest. We wanna have integrity. And one of the best responses is we work with lots of customers in the oil industry. So we're calling you. We understand you're in the oil industry. We want to see if there's an opportunity to partner. So just be upfront with them. So the future is here. So the, the growth of the Internet ha has definitely changed the way people buy. Uh, people are much more self-directed as buyers. And a lot of times when they're engaging with marketing and come to you to qualify, they're a ways down their decision process. So just be aware of that and, and know how to handle it. And one of the best ways to do that is through sales and marketing being aligned. Uh, another thing is you need to use technology to engage your, engage your buyers and potential buyers. A predictive dialer. So I gave you the scenario of not calling into area where maybe there's a snowstorm or or having wildfires, or maybe it's a, a holiday specific to that region, like I can Mardi Gras. You you can use a predictive dialer that will put your calls in queue, and it will already account for those different scenarios, so they don't have you calling there. Another thing you can do is set up the criteria, so.
So through using the predictive dialer, maybe it's going to push all the really hot leads to the front. So that's a predictive dialer. Then online chat is huge. So when your customers go out to your website, give them an opportunity to talk to you and find out what, what their interest is, and then maybe you can convert that to a follow-up and in a conversation. Marketing automation tools and CRM. So CRM is a great tool when doing lead generation, but adding a good marketing automation tool on top of that just, just kind of takes it the, the next step further, and it measures a lot of the different results that we're looking for, like ROI and you know click-throughs and who's going to your landing page, things like that. So uh, lots of good tools out there that you can really use to your advantage. And with that, I would say if you have any questions, please feel free to submit them in the, the question panel, and we will follow up after the webinar. And I thank you for your time today. And with that, I'll turn it back over to you, Julia. Awesome. Thank you so much, Greg. Inside sales is a topic that not a lot of people can speak on well, and um, it's so great to hear about it. You can get more presentations like this when you sign up for other upcoming Ledger you Partners webinars that cover a variety of topics and different technologies. We at LedgeView have a lot of excellent resources to offer you, whether you're interested in learning more about today's topic, like inside sales, or maybe marketing, or CRM, or customer service. We really put together an extensive library of resources to help benefit you in uh, a lot of different ways. Uh, as I said earlier in today's presentation, we will be sending all of you a link to access today's webinar on demand. You can share that within your professional networks, pass it along to your colleagues, maybe play it at a future sales coaching session, whatever you like. That email will be coming from Ledgeview Partners, so once again, be sure to add us to your safe senders list so you don't have any trouble getting that. With any questions you may have that you didn't get to ask during today's presentation, you can always reach out to us via email, social, give us a call, whatever you like. And that's all we have for today, folks. It's been a pleasure. We'll see you again very soon. Stay warm out there if you're in the Midwest like us. Uh, they say it's less than a week until spring, but I'm not so sure here in Wisconsin. Have a great day, everyone. We'll see you soon.